Good evening, I'm Cole Hartman, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. The Husker softball team has added Omaha native Bella Bacon to their roster for the 2024 season. Bella joins Rhonda Vervel's squad as a sophomore transfer from Purdue. While in West Lafayette, she appeared in 26 games, had six starts as the designated hitter. Back in Nebraska, Bacon won a four-year letter winner at Millard West High School and a two-time Super State selection. Turning to the other diamond sport of baseball, head coach Will Bolt announced earlier today that the Huskers and assistant coach Jeff Christie had mutually agreed to part ways. Coach Bolt went on to state that Jeff Christie played a key role for the last four seasons and that he wishes Jeff and his family nothing but the best moving forward. The search for his replacement is currently ongoing. As they continue their adventures down in Brazil, today the Nebraska volleyball team is matching up with the U21 Brazilian national team. The game started at 5 p.m. Central. Nebraska won the first set 25-21, and moments ago, one that took the second set 25-18. You can tune in to a live video stream by visiting the Nebraska Volleyball social media accounts. Some very large news broke in the golf world today revolving around the merging of the PGA Tour and Live Golf. The entities signed an agreement that would combine the PGA Tours, Live Golfs, as well as the DP World Tours, commercial businesses, and rights into a new yet to be named for-profit company. The terms and agreements are not fully finalized, but are scheduled to be completed in the coming months. Just a few MLB scores to provide you this evening. The Phillies have the lead on the Tigers 1-0 in the bottom of the first. The Royals and Marlins are scoreless in the second, and same goes for the Twins and the Rays, also in the second inning. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Now get ready for a full two hours of Sports Nightly right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Three eligible to the near side. Back to throw is Morgan. Stepping up, gets hit, drop. Oh, he got drilled at the 18-yard line. Ty Robinson's second sack of the year. I think he took his shoes off with that hit. Simon gets the shotgun snap. Husker send the corner blitz. Simon steps, throws. Pass intercepted. Picked off Go, by baby. Miles Farmer. Go, to baby. The 35 to the 30. Rook tied down to the 27-yard line. Miles Farmer's fourth career high NT. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Thank you. Welcome. We're back on a Tuesday night edition of Sports Island. So glad to be here with you tonight. We've got a really fun show lined up for you tonight. One of our favorites, Adam Rittenberg of ESPN.com, will be here. We'll talk all things college football. I really want his thoughts on the SEC last week deciding to stay with eight conference games and not going to nine, even when they're adding Oklahoma and Texas next year in 2024. I, you know, real quickly on this, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, Jessica, but I don't care. But everybody should play the same. If it's eight, great. Everybody play eight. But it's not right in my eyes if the Big Ten and the Big 12 are playing nine and they're playing eight. Everybody should play the same number. And I don't really care what it is. Well, and I think that's where hopefully eventually when the, the all the talks are that eventually college football is going to be their own entity and have their own kind of governing body. And you'd think that they'd move towards that because there's a lot of frustration anyways. I mean, you're talking about some of the some of the SEC teams are not – playing the hardest SEC teams and, and how do they match up at the bottom of the league compared to some of the others, you know, and you can argue the depth of the league. Yes, at the top, it's very, very good, but at the bottom, not you so know, good. and then also you've got all these other conferences that are having to schedule really good in the non-conference to be able to make up for some of their conferences. And so, yeah, I mean, hopefully that's one of the things that if and when, I mean, I know that's just been the talks and the rumor and the scuttlebutt, but if this happens where they have their own governing body, that's one of the things that they do is say, all right, they're going to regulate the scheduling, and if the Big 12 adds more teams, and you can you can really start looking at doing that with these conferences and saying, okay, this is what we're going to do in the conference, and you're going to have one non-conference matchup against a co-power, whatever they're going to be. Power it's, four, power three, whatever it is. Uh, whatever being. it is, yeah. you're going to schedule one or two of those, and then you can go schedule a non-power five in the other however many it is. But, but it's also, it's a long season now. It's You're talking about long. going to the playoff. You also have to th keep that into consideration about who you're scheduling in the non-con. And maybe eight's the right number. That's fine, but let everybody play by the same yes. rules. You know, the Big Ten has been at nine, 
And the Big Ten is strongly, and I'm air quoting this for you not watching on our YouTube stream, I'm <laughs> strongly suggesting of one of your three non-cons, they want that to be against a Power 5 team. And so Nebraska has marched along with that drumbeat. They played Oklahoma the last two years. They're back to Colorado this year. So that's 10 of the 12 have been against a Power 5 team. The SEC at 8, and they'll add one more and get to 9, but that's still one behind everybody else. So what, just make it uniform. Make it a and equal an, across the board. Another thing on that note is that the SEC never opens up with SEC opponents. They don't. And the Big Ten. We do it all the time. And how... Nice would it be for this staff, for this team, implementing all the new systems to not have to come out of the gate with a conference foe on the road. So that's another thing, too, is, okay, you know, things just change so much from the first game to the end of the season, and you'd like to have a little couple of games to kind of implement some things and build some confidence and get some things going before you go right into playing conference right. opponents. So I'd like to see that change as well. This will be the fourth straight, I'm not telling Oscar fans, they don't, this is a fourth straight year Nebraska is going to open with a conference opponent away from home. Last year we were in Ireland two years ago. It was Illinois. The COVID year we opened at Ohio State, and this year we're going to open at Minnesota. So we'll get into a lot of that with Adam coming up here in just a little bit. Also, Husker soccer back from there. A foreign trip. They went to Iceland, which is it's on my bucket list. I would love to go there sometime. Jessica's going to talk to a couple of the players and get their thoughts about what what kind of trip they had. Cole told you that Husker volleyball. And I've been watching that on the uh, the, the the YouTube. What's stream. the number of people watching? There was was it sixteen hundred Cole watching? And the Huskers have won the first two sets. This is against a U twenty one Brazilian national team. The Huskers won twenty five twenty one twenty five eighteen. So these are. Future Olympians that are going to be competing for gold medals. And they're good. Yeah. Brazil's one of the better countries in the world. Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're the ones that are always kind of right there with Team USA. And yep. so, yeah, no, th that's some talent, you know, that they're facing on that team. So it's been fun. I've seen Harper Murray getting some playing time. Beck Alex has been phenomenal in this match that I've watched. And, and also uh, Merritt Beeson. Yeah, Merritt Beeson. Merritt Beeson. She looks good Friend too. Friend of so. the show. Yeah, so I know you <laughs> talked to her a, little, a while back. So that's going on right now. We'll keep you updated on all that. The, the story of the day around here is, is Jeff Christie, uh, no longer Nebraska's pitching coach. Uh, I know this is probably really popular with the fan base. I think pitching coaches, Jessica, are a little bit like offensive coordinators in football. If things are going wrong, everybody hates the play call. They didn't write, make the right play call or play selection, and why did we run that play on third and five or whatever it may be. It's pretty easy to j jump at that, and I think the same thing happens with pitching coaches. But it, and I'm not going to try to defend Jeff to a, a long degree, but Huskers were third in the league in ERA. They allowed the fewest number of walks in the Big Ten Conference. There, there wasn't just a total disaster from there. And I think some of the shortcomings this past year dealt with much of the offense as they do with the pitching. But th this was, I'm sure, not an easy move for, for Will Bolt to make. But, you know, when you don't make the tournament in back-to-back -back years, I think you look to make some changes. And I think that's what this was about. I mean, we've seen that trend, right, with head coaches. And, um, you know, Fred Hoiberg made changes to his staff. Uh, Scott Frost had made changes to his staff. And so, um, yeah, I mean, it's this, the standard is that this team expects to be playing the postseason. All the teams here, that's, yep. that's what the standard is, is to be playing in the postseason. And so you miss out two straight years, there's got to be a change. And I agree with you. I mean, there were times that... This offense hit so well, and it's easy to overlook because you look at the numbers, but how many times did they not come up with a big hit when they needed it or deliver when – how many bases run, – how many base runners did they leave on in critical moments? Yep. So, uh, I mean, some of it – and I'm not blaming anywhere else, but it's not all pitching. And like, kind of like you said, I, I think a lot of times it falls back on that. Um, and Coach Bolt sat up here how many times and said – I help make these decisions. I co-sign off on, on the decision, decisions. It's not all on him. When people would ask questions about why are you leaving a guy in, why don't you go to the bullpen sooner, you know, he, he's said that he's been involved with those as well. So he took as much responsibility as Coach Christie. You know, Will's really just finished his third year. You can't really count the COVID year. Got shut down after 15 games. So year one, they win the league. They, went, they get to the regional final against Arkansas. Last year was bad, and there were some injuries along the pitching staff that I think you could, could understand with, with Perry and Buns going down two years ago. This year, they didn't have a lot of injuries. It just at times wasn't great. Um, it, the, the, the release said it was a, it's a mutual agreeing to part ways. Will Bolt's quote in the release was, he played a key role for us the last four seasons, helping us earn that Big Ten title and NCAA regional final. We wish Jeff and his family nothing but the best. Jeff is from Lincoln. 
went to school here, played on some terrific teams, played on a College World Series team here as well. So he's a Husker through and through, so I'm sure this was not an easy, an easy decision for either of those guys. And that's a close-knit staff, right? I mean, I, would, I feel for Coach Bolt having to make those conversations, but I guess that's also something that you sign up for when you do bring on someone that you're close with, knowing that with the way that this profession is, maybe someday this, this day would come. I'm sure he had to consider that possibility, but I got to imagine it was a really, really tough day for Coach Bolt. So, I, you know, I've been on some of the boards today. There's a lot of cheering, and everybody's happy about it. It's kind of a red meat thing. Again, I, I, those numbers speak for themselves for Jeff. I don't think he has anything to hang his head about. You finished third in the league in the ERA. The team finished fourth, so that's kind of where they are. And you mentioned the left men on base. They lose a game to North Dakota State when they struck out 16 times. That's not on the pitching coach. There was enough There was enough things that went around that didn't involve Jeff Christie. So, And there were some critical errors sometimes at times. That's on the defense, you know? a lot of I them mean, came from Bryce. And, and, you know, you had asked me midseason who's my MVP. I couldn't give it to Bryce because of the errors, and they were critical errors yeah. in a lot of times. So so who who would you think well, that the direction will be, or how I, do you think the direction think will go? I think Rob Childress has probably been, if not offered, strongly encouraged to look at it. I think Rob would still like to be a head coach. He's been out of the head coaching business for two years after Texas A&M cut ties with him. I think Rob's probably going to be at least the first guy to at least be offered the job. Where it goes from there, I don't know. I, I would love to see Rob Childress take that. I think that'd be really popular with Husker fans uh, to go along with it. I think they would love to have Rob. He was the pitching coach for a couple of those College World Series appearances in the early 2000s. Been a head coach at A&M for a long time, had a great run there. So I think he'd be a great choice should he choose to stay and do that. So. And can the volunteers isn't recruit in baseball? No. 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 Now, starting July 1, college baseball is going to a third yep. paid full-time assistant coach. So that's the thing. And, you know, some people sit there and go, well, go get this coach. We're still at, at the Big Ten level and at Nebraska. There's a pay discrepancy by what the ball bat sports coaches are making in the Big Ten compared to the SEC. There's a or wide gap. Probably Big 12, too. Like, probably like, most of the Big 12s, too. I mean, LSU's head coach makes $1.2 million. Nebraska's head coach makes 400000 I don't know what Patty Gasso makes, but I'm sure it might million. be. It's, it's over probably a million. triple what Ronda makes. It's just there's a discrepancy in the South to the North in the salary structure. So people, and I've seen this on boards today, go get Auburn's pitching coach. Go get, that, that's just not going to happen because there's a big gap in pay right now with the SEC to the Big Ten in the ball bat sports. Doesn't have that way in football or basketball, but it is in the ball bat sports. Can you do whatever you want with that, that fourth assistant or the, the uh, extra assistant? Like, yeah. could you make it a recruiting coordinator? You could. Yeah. Yeah, you could. So I, I don't know where he's going to go with that. I think this probably changes what he maybe was thinking about doing a couple months ago with, with uh, this dismissal and having to fill this. And it's critical to fill this quickly, Jessica, yeah. because of the portal. Yep. A lot of guys are in the portal right now. They, you're not going to get a pitcher. They don't know who they're pitching for. So they've got to it, – it, it's there's a time is of, of essence here. Cole did tell you softball picked up a transfer today. Bella Bacon, who's from Millard West, played at Purdue this past year. She's now going to be a Cornhusker. So Ronda's added a transfer, and baseball got one late this afternoon. They did get a pitcher, Bobby Olson from Brown University, who was their top pitcher for Brown. He's got one year of eligibility left. He's announced he's coming to Nebraska. A little surprised by a pitcher coming here. Well, you don't know who the pitching coach is, but must like the rest of it. Uh, how about, though, you know, we had the call last night talking about keeping that talent, that in-state talent home, and it, it is a roster that has a lot of in-state talent, but now she's, Coach Ravel is adding another one that's coming back home. I know went to Purdue out of high school, but coming back home to Nebraska. And, and I, sure, don't, I don't think that'll be the last. No, I don't either. I think there's some, some major moves still to come for softball in the offseason. So Bella, what a great name, Bella Bacon. That's yeah. a great, great name. All right, that's what we have on the program tonight, 402-413-2400. That's the number if you want to dot us up with a comment or question or fire off a text. That is on our Sports Nightly Hotline, brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. 18 brands, huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. A lot to cover. We'll keep you up to date on the volleyball score. Huge story in professional golf today. We'll get into that a little bit later on the program as well. Adam Rittenberg, coming up next. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm broadcasting student Ann Gallagher with Campus News. 
UNL is the only Big Ten university in Nebraska, part of the only conference with an academic alliance. Being in the Big Ten means superior academics, unique student opportunities, better resources, and world-class research programs. With 72% of undergraduate students receiving scholarships or financial aid, UNL offers a Big Ten education at great value. That's my neighbor, Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, John. Joe's about to make a big mistake. Hey, Joe, think it might be a good idea to call 811 to have the utilities marked before you start digging? I'm not digging very deep. It's no big deal. <laughs> no big deal. Dad, the TV's out. Internet, too. Remember, safe digging always starts with a free call to 811. Oh, what a knuckle. Here. Brought to you by Nebraska 811. It's time again for some Nebraska farm facts. For Nebraska soybean farmers, sustainability is a way of life. 97% of farms are family owned and 95% are participating in conservation programs and using sustainable practices. And they have significant sustainability goals by 2025. 10% more energy efficiency, 10% less land and 25% less soil erosion. This message is brought to you by Nebraska soybean farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t-shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card, free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at fnbo.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. At CHI Health Clinic, we believe health care should be personal because knowing your provider personally makes appointments more comfortable, more productive, and more meaningful to your overall health. Get matched with a primary care provider based on your personality and lifestyle using CHI Health Clinic's My Provider Match. Take the survey at myprovidermatch.com to find the right provider for you. Getting healthier starts by getting personal at CHI Health Clinic. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. For a delicious dinner on the go that will please the whole family, get high chai at High V. Right now, get a High V Chinese dinner for four, just $22 during the month of June. Get four one-pint entrees, two pints of rice or lo mein, and eight egg rolls or crab rangoon. That's right, get a high V Chinese dinner for four, just $22, now to the end of June. Dine in or carry out the crowd-pleasing, award-winning high V Chinese today. Summer stretches may apply. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Husker fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student-athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890Nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student-athletes. That's 1890Nebraska.com. Farmers can make what seems impossible reality with a little hard work and ingenuity. They find solutions to reduce inputs and improve their yield. Valley Irrigation is no different. As the leader in irrigation technology, we deliver results and optimize your operation. Because when you have a vision for the future, you need the people that can make it possible by your side. Expect what's next. Expect what's possible from Valley. 
visit us at valleyirrigation.com. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres and the Midwest Premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres solutions for every field. Delighted to be joined tonight by Adam Rittenberg of ESPN.com. I guess, Adam, it's okay to talk college football in June, isn't it? It always is. Good to be with you. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. Uh, big SEC meetings last week. I want to start there because I think the big debate down there was whether to move to nine conference games or keep it at eight. I guess the decision for now is to keep it at eight, even with the addition of Oklahoma and Texas. What were some of the particulars? What were you hearing on the pros and cons of that debate? Well, you know, this isn't a new debate in some ways. The SEC talked about, um, you know, whether to stay at eight games or go to nine games. Obviously, the difference is Texas and Oklahoma coming into the league. You know, they've been supportive of a nine-game model. Both had played uh, around Robin in the Big 12, so it wouldn't be a major adjustment for them. Um, but, you know, there had been an increasing number of schools that uh, wanted to stay at eight. You know, there's obviously a television contract you know, that schools want to see adjusted with the SPN to be compensated for an additional conference game. There's also those that, uh, you know, see an additional conference game as an impediment to bowl eligibility or even in some cases the college football playoff, although it's just hard to, hard to buy that argument um, in, a, in a system which is going from four teams to 12 teams. And I think that's, uh, unfortunately, you've been sort of the crutch for the SEC as well. This has worked at eight games. Why should we change it? Because we keep winning national championships. I, I just think it's short-sighted. I think the teams that would win the national championship would win it with eight games, nine games, ten conference games. Like those are the best teams. Like they're gonna they're gonna win national championships. And um, I, you know what, what surprised me, Greg, is that there just doesn't seem to be. There's almost a support of this from SEC fans. Like the idea of going from eight to nine conference games would be to better serve the fan, have more SEC uh, content and product and 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 variety of games. It just doesn't seem to resonate with that fan base for whatever reason. So they'll stay at eight for another year. Maybe they'll go to nine beginning in 2025. Uh, but uh, certainly disappointing, I think, for those, for those of us who would like to see a better SEC schedule than the one we've gotten for many years. Adam, with the SEC and really all the conferences, are the day and age of the divisions gone? Are we basically at the end of that era? It, we are. And you know, this is something that I've actually called for going back six or seven years, even maybe longer than that. And I think it's, again, you want to have a better schedule rotation. You want to have a better championship game. You know, the way to do that is to get rid of divisions because what divisions do is create too many games that don't need to be played on a yearly basis and often create uh, championship games that are, are not very compelling. You know, we've seen that in the Big Ten um, where only one side of the league has won the championship every year. Um, now, there's been some good championship games, but still they've all been won by the East Division or uh, initially the, the leaders' division. So why is that good for the conference? Um, well, people say, well, you don't want to have repeat matchups. I, I, I say to that, you know, you give me a good matchup twice, why is that bad? Why, who, who wouldn't want a, a compelling matchup for the second time? So, um, yeah, I, I think you know, the Big Ten is not going to have divisions in its new schedule model for 2024. There's still some things that are being ironed out as far as which games to protect uh, and which games to not protect. But whatever it will be will not be a division model, I'm told. The, prior to the SEC meetings, the ACC certainly was in the spotlight. Uh, their grant of rights agreement that is, I think, holding some teams back. You've got some ADs, particularly Florida State and Clemson, that are sitting there going, wow, we got a lot of schools in our part of the country that are going to be making a lot more TV money than us. How restless is it right now in the ACC? You know Jim Phillips really well, their commissioner. It's, it's, it's probably not a great time to be in his seat. It's not. You know, he inherited a tough situation, and, and most of those, really all the ADs, uh, other than maybe a few, were, were not involved in crafting the deal uh, that put the ACC in this predicament, you know, having such a long grant of rights, uh, you know, very difficult to break and, and, and falling behind further and further in, in revenue. So it's understandable that Florida State and Clemson are, are unhappy, and, and, and they did uh, you know, talk about having a, um, a, a revenue model that would change based on your, your performance, which I think is a good thing. But it's still not going to be enough in the long run, I think, to keep those teams 
happy. So at what point is there a break? What point um, do they look to get out? And also, you know, how, what, what type of appetite could the Big Ten or the SEC have for some of those ACC schools? You know, if they are if they are suddenly available, I think that's what's going to be really interesting because uh, you know when the Big Ten explored expansion back in 2010, there was definitely interest in um, in looking at some schools that are in the ACC footprint. I know Georgia Tech came up for example, and North Carolina would always be of interest to the Big Ten. Um, and then obviously there's some natural ties to the SEC with with Clemson and Florida State. You know, being in states where you already have an SEC uh, presence, North Carolina, uh, or NC State being in states that the SEC might want to get in a state, rather, the SEC would want to get into in North Carolina. So I, I think there is some appeal. I don't know if it's a league that's full of appealing options, but there's a few schools in that league that likely would be able to land somewhere else. The problem is for them, you know, they can't get out of their current agreement right now. Yeah, I'm busy with Adam Rittenberg of ESPN.com. We're talking college football. You know, Jim Phillips has been on the job for a couple of years. you got a lot of new conference commissioners, including the new one in the Big Ten. Brett Yormack is certainly making some noise in the Big 12 conference. They, he has made it uh, clear he's openly looking to add members to, to that league. What, 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 what kind of sense do you get? How close is the Big 12 to maybe expanding their footprint? Well, I think they're going to expand. It's just a matter of which schools and which sports will be emphasized and, um, and whether it's something that's really going to get people excited or not. You know, they, they've had you know, certainly no uh, secret about their desire to expand to the West Coast. Um, you know, uh, Colorado, which has you know, been a former member of the Big 12, and uh, Arizona have, have been courted, as have others. You know, there's also been some basketball uh, schools, Gonzaga, UConn, um, that, that have been on the radar for the Big 12. So you know, where it ends up landing is going to be very interesting. Brett Yormark's uh, you know, certainly taken an aggressive approach so far as, as Big 12 commissioner, which you know, has, has re resonated in that league. Uh, but it, you know, I, think, I think when the dust settles, it's going to be very interesting to see what the Big 12 ultimately looks like and whether that, that truly benefits the league going forward. The league's definitely in a stronger position now than it was when Texas and Oklahoma departed for the SEC, but how is it going to look in 18 months? Because you know, Brett Yormark has made it very clear that he wants to have more of a national conference, a conference that can stretch from, from coast to coast. And you know, we're going to see how that, how that works out. Is it going to be Arizona and Colorado? Is it going to be Colorado and UConn? Is it going to be Gonzaga as a, as a basketball you know, member primarily? Uh, up in the state of Washington, it, it, it's uh, all options seem to be on the table right now. But which ones are, are else actually going to happen? Uh, it, it's going to be very interesting. You know, I mentioned the big t the Big Ten's new commissioner. I don't know if you've had a chance to meet him. What's the early take on their new leadership? Yeah, I think it's been good. You know, talking to uh, some coaches, some athletic directors in the league, I think they like uh, Tony Petiti and his approach so far. I think there was a need for a different leadership style, a different leader. Um, you know, the way things had gotten with Kevin Warren. And I think that uh, Petiti has, has been a good listener. I think he uh, has, has, uh, has some good ideas. Uh, that, that, but he's also been really receptive to, um, to hearing from, you know, those who have been you know, in these roles for a while. So I, I think, uh, I, you know, he, he, he's in an interesting position and in that there's still some work to do with the television contract, but there's also other areas to, to work on. And so I think the first six months, eight months, on the job, I think we'll get a real sense of, of who he is and, and the things that he wants to emphasize, you know, coming in from the outside, but also with a really impressive background at, at MLB and other stops that he's made. He knows the media business. He worked as an executive at all the networks, but he's also worked in a leadership role for, for, a, for a major professional uh, league in MLB. And so uh, I think, the, but, but so far I, I've gotten good feedback from, you know, how he's interacting with coaches, how he's interacting with administrators, which, you know, let's just call it what it, what it was. It was it was a struggle under the previous administration. Yeah, it, it was it was strained. There's no doubt it was with, with Kevin. I, I like Kevin personally, but I think you're right. It was strained there. All right, I got I to gotta ask you one football-type related question here. I'm really fascinated, Adam, by Wisconsin. and what the, I mean, they're totally changing their culture and their mindset, going from what they've been working under all the way back to the Alvarez days to now what Luke Fickle is doing. What's your sense of what, how, they, how their first six months with, with Coach Fickle taking over the reins in Madison, how's that going? And where do you think this is headed for the Badgers? 
It's going to be one of the more interesting stories, not just in the Big Ten, but in college football, because we're so used to Wisconsin you know, playing a certain way and, and being a certain way. And while there's certainly some elements of Luke and his personality that connect very much to, you know, what Wisconsin has been, he's also been aggressive in, in changing things. I, I certainly his, his approach to the transfer portal has been much more aggressive. Uh, they've added a lot of players, especially on the offensive side, quarterbacks, receivers, um, you know, th- those types of players, offensive linemen. And then the system that they're incorporating offensively, it's an air raid system. And that is, is a system that you just don't normally associate with the University of Wisconsin. So I think there's really a lot of intrigue around the conference about how this is going to work because Wisconsin was not broken when they fired Paul Christ, but they wanted to better position themselves for the future uh, postseason 12-team playoff. And you know, Luke Fickle is, is a terrific hire, um, a guy that, with a lot of Big Ten roots, but also – he, he, he wanted Phil Longo. He wanted the air raid, and he's going to try to do it at the University of Wisconsin. And so when you see what they look like offensively, it's really going to blow your mind. It did for me in the spring, and um, we'll see if it's effective or not. In a conference where uh, your defense still kind of wins the day for most programs, but I think Wisconsin sees itself as one where if they want to start making the expanded CFP, they need to be more dynamic, more productive on offense. They need better quarterback play. Those are all parts of, of what Luke Fickle is trying to I- install there in Madison. Oh, it's just fascinating to me. Well, Adam, don't blink. We'll have conference media days here before you know it. Yeah, it'll be fun. It's a fun, fun time of year for sure. Very good. Enjoy the rest of your summer. Thanks, Greg. There he is, Adam Rittenberg, ESPN.com. Boy, you can throw about anything at Adam, and he uh, has great answers for us. Love his insight into this wonderful sport of college football. He joined us on our Sports Highly Hotline, brought to you by Woodhouse where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. They've got 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you were looking for with Woodhouse. All right, phone lines, text lines back open for you, 402-413-2400. Jessica will rejoin me next. For a delicious dinner on the go that will please the whole family, get high chai at High V. Right now, get a High V Chinese dinner for four, just twenty-two dollars during the month of June. Get four one pint entrees, two pints of rice or lo mein, and eight egg rolls or crab rangoon. That's right, get a High V Chinese dinner for four, just twenty-two dollars now through the end of June. Dine in or carry out the crowd-pleasing, award-winning High V Chinese today. Some restrictions may apply. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus. Insurance. Employee benefits. Financial services. Woodhouse is your premier luxury car dealer with exclusive Omaha Metro dealerships and seven top brands to choose from. Where craftsmanship, performance, and a stunning design are at the forefront, your next luxury vehicle will immerse you in an environment unlike any other. Plus, get your buying experience to match the premium quality of your vehicle with available nationwide driveway delivery, and our knowledgeable sales teams will exceed every expectation. Browse our selection of new and pre-owned luxury and performance vehicles online at woodhouse.com. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment in only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Hit us up on the text line, text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com.
Go Big Red. SOS to the rescue. SOS to the rescue. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and heading for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so hot. The air conditioner is out again. SOS, he screams and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota, the brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> Think again. Toyota hybrids. Find yours at toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer estimates, CY 2000 through 2021 sales. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Hey, Husker fans, you've got an opportunity to be a part of the 100th anniversary of Memorial Stadium in 2023 by purchasing a Through These Gates mini plan, the three-game ticket package on sale now at huskers.com slash tickets, or you can call the ticket office during business hours or just stop on by. They'd love to see your smiling face coming to the ticket office. Here's what the deal is. It's priced at 100 bucks. You get both non a ticket to both non-conference games, Northern Illinois and Louisiana Tech, and then you get to pick the conference game. You get to pick whether it's Michigan, which I'm told has been a pretty hot, hot request. Uh, Northwestern, Purdue, Maryland, or Iowa. And I heard Iowa, obviously, those are obvious, right? Michigan and Iowa are going to probably be the, the ones shaking the most, but maybe those don't fit into your schedule. This is perfect if you can't ded dedicate seven Saturdays to coming to Lincoln for games, but you want to come, you want to experience some Husker football year one from a rural year 100 for this glorious stadium. Uh, this is a great way to do it. The seats are in the, the north and south end zone, three game mini plan. And again, it's called the Through These Gates mini plan so there you go uh, huskers athletics put this out a couple weeks ago and i'm told several thousand have already sold so still some left uh, for you to be a part of that season um 402-413-2400 the number to call with a comment or a question the the top story of the day is is the change on the baseball coaching staff with jeff christie mutually agreeing to part ways with the husker staff he'd been the pitching coach since will bolt has been the head coach here at Nebraska, and I went through some of the numbers that, you know, I think there's some, there's a perception out there that Nebraska's faults this year were all on the shoulders and the arms of the pitchers. I, I beg to differ on that. Could they be better? Absolutely. We had a trouble finding that third starter, which then in turn made it difficult to find a guy to go out and throw on Tuesday nights in those midweek games where Nebraska went six and six in the midweek, and those were damaging losses to Nebraska, particularly the RPI count. And some of that, yeah, there's no doubt. Some of that does fall on Jeff Christie's uh, shoulders for that. Uh, but I think Jeff, for the most part, did a fairly nice job here. I think you then turn your attention to where do you go from here. And the obvious thought is Rob Childress, who's been, after he was let go at A&M a couple of years ago, has been a part 
as a volunteer assistant for this staff the last couple of years. Uh, I think Rob still has an itch to maybe be a head coach one more time in his career. So, um, you know, I think let's Rob maybe kick some tires. But I think also if you're Will Bolt, you don't want to wait too long. The portal's open. you got guys' names out there. Uh, that probably might not come to Nebraska. They don't know who the pitching coach is going to be if they're a pitcher. So um, I think you watch, you watch the next couple of days to see if something pops on that. But it's going to be interesting, I think, to see where they where they go if it's not Rob Childers. I think that's the obvious choice. But where where does where does Will Bolt look to to move for that? And you know, we heard some guys enter the portal last week. We had uh, Corbin Hawkins retire from baseball. He's going to. He's got a paid internship lined up. He's an engineering student, wants to take advantage of that. I totally get that. I support that. I think that's great because Corbin knows he's not a big league pitcher. I mean, he's probably not getting much, if any, scholarship money here in Nebraska. And if he's already starting to think about post-college life, that's great. I think that's fantastic for him. Jake Buns entered the transfer portal. But really, for the most part, I think you're lit. people were asking me, all right, who, who are kind of the guys you hang your hat on? I think it's a big summer for Drew Christo. He's going up to Alaska to pitch in that college league, so he'll be up there for about six, seven weeks. I think you still have hope that he could be a weekend starter for you. Will Walsh was in and out of that weekend role a couple different times, pitched great at the Big Ten tournament two weeks ago in Omaha. In fact, he got named to the all-conference the tournament team uh, for 10 and two-thirds innings of shutout ball up there. Caleb Clark is a guy that they had such high hopes for, the freshman from Canada, and it just didn't work out for him this year. But I don't think you give up on a, a left-handed pitcher that can throw four different pitches and has velo in the low 90s. So I think that's another name that you certainly want to keep an eye on moving forward. And, and there's some other guys. Jalen Wordley, I was impressed with a few times we saw him pitch this year. J.C. Gutierrez was another true freshman left-hander that looked good at times. I'm told Kyle Perry can come back. I haven't heard definitively whether Kyle wants to come back. But that would give you kind of a... A uh, veteran guy in the bullpen to maybe uh, throw out there early in the season to end the games to do some of that type of thing. So, um, yeah, th- there's certainly some some arms that will be back for this team uh, moving into next season, but you certainly have to add some. And we told you this earlier in the hour that they have picked up one transfer addition came out just hours ago. Bobby Olson from Brown has one year of eligibility left. He, he threw to about a 4-6 ERA at Brown, did face a Big Ten team, in Penn State, went five innings, only gave up a run to the Nittany Lions. So uh, that's one name that jumped out when I looked at his season stats. But there, there's going to be some more that uh, come through here as well. Uh, Mark on our text line says, how common is it for a major college pitching coach to not be a former pitcher? Uh, probably not the norm, Mark. Um, Jeff was a tremendous catcher, made it to AAA, the AAA level as a catcher. So certainly understands the mechanics of that. It's not, I mean, Dave Duncan, the long time, I think he was a long time Cardinals pitching coach. He was a former catcher. So you see it some, but I said, I would think a large majority of pitching coaches are former pitchers. That, that Mark, that's the, the big criticism of Jeff is how do you have a non-pitcher be your pitching coach? It is a little different. It's not totally unheard of. And again, I think catchers certainly have a great feel for the game and a great feel for mechanics. They spot it. They see it all the time. And because Jeff played a handful of years of professional baseball, not again, not at the major league level, but certainly at the AAA levels, one step away from that. So, um, yeah, again, I hear that a lot. I know a lot of people that, that thing is out there, but I don't know that that needs to be held against Jeff to, that he wasn't a former pitcher. To, to handle that role. But to answer your question, it's probably rare. There are some, but it, it, is, it is rare to have that. So we'll see. It's going to be an interesting time. I, I know Will Bolts, this is probably not easy for him. He and Jeff were you know, together. Uh, on the, Will was on the staff. Jeff was a player for that 05 team that, that made it to Omaha, won a game in the College World Series, and then they have certainly been friends uh, ever since. So it's a, it's a tight-knit staff, as Jessica and I were talking about in the opening segment. And so this shakeup is never easy. But when you don't make postseason for the last two years, I think you, you look at where can you get better. And I think this is Will Bolt's way of, 
of doing that. Hey, folks, buckle up. Put the phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Keep the calls, texts coming, 402-413-2400. Step aside, get our final break of the hour in, and back to wrap up hour one next. Husker fans, mark your calendar for Sunday morning, July 16th to join the Nebraska football team in the race for a cure against pediatric brain cancer. It's the 11th annual Nebraska football road race. This year, all runners start and finish on Tom Osborne Field in Memorial Stadium. The final 69 yards will recreate the iconic 2013 SB Play of the Year when brain cancer patient Jack Hoffman scored a touchdown in the spring game. To register, go to huskers.com slash road race. Sponsored by the home agency with support from the Lincoln Track Club. More Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic care first. Studies show that chiropractic is safe, drug-free, and the most effective treatment option for back, neck, and joint pain. It can also help patients of all ages reduce migraines, improve mobility, and maximize athletic performance. Keep the entire family healthy and active with natural, cost-effective chiropractic care. Find a chiropractic physician near you at nebraskachiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. For a delicious dinner on the go that will please the whole family, get high chai at High V. Right now, get a High V Chinese dinner for four, just twenty-two dollars during the month of June. Get four one pint entrees, two pints of rice or lo mein, and eight egg rolls or crab rangoon. That's right, get a High V Chinese dinner for four, just twenty-two dollars now through the end of June. Dine in or carry out the crowd-pleasing, award-winning High V Chinese today. Some restrictions may apply. From the University of Nebraska Lincoln, I'm broadcasting student Grant Hansen with Campus News. University of Nebraska leadership has launched a $3 billion fundraising campaign to support education access for Nebraska students. The Only in Nebraska campaign, the largest in university history, will focus on creating scholarships to make education more affordable, attracting more Nebraska students, and keeping young people in the state after graduation. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Cornerstone Bank proudly serves Nebraska with a full line of loan and deposit products. Cornerstone is large enough to handle all of your financial needs while offering the personal service you deserve and the local decision-making you expect from a family-owned community bank. Stop in or call one of the Cornerstone Bank locations near you to discover the cornerstone difference bank on a solid foundation cornerstone bank member fdic equal housing lender loan subject to approval to win the game you gotta have more strength you gotta be tougher you gotta be reliable you gotta want it more than the other guy and you need a great team you can count on backing you up the whole time. Whether it's in the field with your Massey Ferguson or on the field with the Huskers, red is the color of getting it done quicker, smarter, and efficiently. So this season, make sure you're checking out the lineup that'll get more done where and when it counts. From your Nebraska Massey Ferguson dealers. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more acres. Solutions for every field. Greg Sharp with you. Jessica's out uh, tracking down an interview. We're talking some of the, making some of the football players available for some interviews tonight. So she's out trying to do some of that. And why would they schedule that right in the middle of Sports Highly? I mean, I thought, I thought Sports Highly was appointment listening and everybody just shut thing down the world. From six to eight o'clock tonight, but somebody else doing that. But she'll be back in hour number two and uh, looking forward to her chat with a couple of Husker soccer players who uh, apparently had a great time. They loved that trip to Iceland. You know, the volleyball team is down in Brazil. The volleyball team just wrapped up a sweep of that U21 Brazilian national team. How impressive is that? 25-21, 25-18, 25-21. So they're 3-0 and on their trip. They still have another week to go on their trip. That's a long trip for them down in Brazil. I think the soccer team was in Iceland maybe 10 days for there. And then the men and women's basketball teams are going to... Europe, late July, early August. It's weird. You're allowed to take these foreign trips for these team sports every four years. And it just happens that for Nebraska, men's and women's basketball, volleyball, and soccer, they all line up on the same year. A lot of schools, it's spread out. Oh, well, maybe the men's basketball team will go this year and the women's of the next year, but it's, it's lined up. And I, I think COVID had something to do with that. It, 
it lined it up where all four go at the same time. So soccer is gone and back. Volleyball will be back on the 14th is when they come back. And I uh, can't wait to talk to some of that team when they get back uh, to Lincoln as well. But great start to their trip. I think I've been following them on social media. I think they're having a great time. They, they went and visited some community centers in some spots around Brazil. And then on the court, they've just been terrific. They have just gotten after people uh, winning that U21 game tonight in uh, uh, in in those uh, those in Rio. Is that where they were tonight, Rio? Yeah. So Rio, they won that tonight. So they still have a couple more matches down there, but uh, we'll keep following that as we move along. Uh, NBA playoffs off tonight. They traveled. They're in Miami getting ready for game three. Tomorrow night, I had a, we had a text last night that said, um, if I changed my mind, I, I was going Nuggets in five because the Heat won game two. No, I, I still think the Nuggets are the better team for whatever. The Nuggets just seemed off the other night. They just didn't. I think their coach was really unhappy with the effort that they gave. Uh, so uh, I, I think they bounce back and win game three. I, you know, I, I, I wouldn't be shocked if the series goes six, but Denver's going to win the series. I just think they're the better team, and I think it's going to be a hard chore for the Heat. I do like watching the Heat. I think, that's, I think they're a nice little team. Uh, obviously, they've had a great run. They were an eight seed to come all the way through the East and beat the Celtics the way they did to get to the finals. Um, I, I think that's uh, – they're a heck of a team. But Joker is incredible. Love his game. Love watching the Nuggets play. And I just think it's their time to win and hang a banner. Uh, so it'll be fun. But, yeah, game three tomorrow night. How about this cup playoff so far? My goodness. Vegas has just been skating way past Carolina in the first couple games uh, of that of that Stanley Cup Finals, they're up 2-0. They're a travel day. They're going back down to South Florida for game three of that series. So South Florida's going to be buzzing. The Panthers don't play where the Heat play. The Heat play down there on South Beach. The Panthers play, I think it's Sunrise, Florida. It's a little bit inland a little ways, but it's still in the Miami metro area. So uh, off night for the pro sports tonight. Kind of just Major League Baseball is really all you have going on. And no College World Series for the softball. That resumes tomorrow it's Oklahoma and Florida State. Just amazing with the Sooners' 51 straight wins. They're going for a three-peat in softball. They're a big favorite. Florida State's got a nice team, though. Nice team. Uh, third-ranked team in the country going into the tournament. They've only lost nine games. They might be able to get a game, but I, I don't see them taking two from Oklahoma. I think the Sooners get that done. All right, hour one in the books. Coming up next hour, Jessica will be back. And we'll talk a little bit about what was an incredible wild day for professional golf with the announced merger of the PGA, the DP World Tour, which is the old European tour, and Live Golf. Man, there are some unhappy golfers about this. Can't say I blame them. Guys who stood up for the PGA Tour felt like they were standing up for principles, and then the league goes and cuts a deal. It wipes out all future litigation. Live and the PGA Tour had a number of lawsuits going. Those disappear with this merger announcement. The way the tour is going to be shaped and all that still hasn't been determined. We'll talk more about that coming up in the second hour of the program. Good first hour. Thanks to Adam Rittenberg for joining us. We're back with hour two next. up on the text line text 402-413-2400 with your husker thoughts you already got the hat the jersey maybe even the occasional red and white face paint so kick things off right this season and add the fnbo husker visa debit card to the list pay loud and proud for every husker decal t-shirt or hot dog at the game wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the husker visa debit card free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at fnbo.com slash huskers. Member FDIC. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm broadcasting student Ann Gallagher with Campus News. 26 Husker students presented research findings on nuclear deterrence to a panel of U.S. Strategic Command officials at STRATCOM headquarters in Bellevue. The student-led presentation was the culmination of a semester of STRATCOM-guided research and the latest in a years-long partnership between STRATCOM and the National Security Studies Program at Nebraska. 
Step up to the plate and hit a home run with your next vehicle at Woodhouse. We've got all the bases covered, from our family-friendly SUVs to our durable trucks to haul your gear. Plus, our team will treat you like an MVP and help find the vehicle that's right for you. Visit one of our 20 locations to score big on your next purchase. Or shop our selection of new and pre-owned vehicles online at woodhouse.com today. Did I forget something? No, just wanted to tell you I love you. Oh, don't forget to buckle up. Drive safe. I will. Love you too. Someone is counting on you to buckle up. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office.
Good evening. I'm Cole Hartman, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. The Huskers softball team has added Omaha native Bella Bacon to their roster for the 2024 season. Bella joins Ronda Ravel's squad as a sophomore transfer from Purdue. While in West Lafayette, she appeared in 26 games and had six starts as the designated hitter. Back in Nebraska, Bacon was a four-year letter winner at Millard West High School and a two-time Super State selection. Turning to the other diamond sport of baseball, head coach Will Bolt announced earlier today that the Huskers and assistant coach Jeff Christie had mutually agreed to part ways. Coach Bolt went on to state that Jeff Christie played a key role for the last four seasons and that he wishes Jeff and his family nothing but the best moving forward. The search is currently ongoing for his replacement. As they continue their adventures down in Brazil, today the Nebraska volleyball team matched up with the U21 Brazilian national team. That game started at 5 p.m. Central, and the Huskers managed to sweep the Brazilians. The sets went 25-21 in the first, 25-18 in the second, and 25-21 in the third. You can be kept up to date on all things Husker volleyball as they continue their travels through Brazil by checking in on their official social media accounts in the coming days. Some very large news broke in the world of golf today revolving around the merging of the PGA Tour and Live Golf. The entity signed an agreement that would combine the PGA Tours, Live Golfs, as well as the DP World Tours, commercial businesses, and rights into a new yet-to-be-named for-profit company. The terms of the agreement are not fully finalized and are scheduled to be completed here in the coming months. And several MLB scores to report this evening. The Phillies lead the Tigers 1-0 in the 5th. The Marlins are way up on the Royals 5-0 in the 5th. The Rays hold the same 5-0 score over the Twins in the 6th. The Nationals lead the Diamondbacks 4-1 in the 3rd. The White Sox are out in front of the Yankees 1-0 in the 4th. The A's lead the Pirates 2-1 in the 3rd. And the Blue Jays are ahead of the Astros 2-1 in the 4th. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student-athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Now get ready for Hour 2 of Sports Nightly right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Three eligible to the near side. Back to throw is Morgan. Stepping up, gets hit, dropped. Oh, he got drilled at the 18-yard line. Ty Robinson's second sack of the year. I think he took his shoes off with that hit. Simon gets the shotgun snap. Husker send a corner blitz. Simon steps, throws. Pass intercepted. Picked off Go, by baby. Miles Farmer. Go, to baby. The 35 to the 30. Rook tied down to the 27-yard line. Miles Farmer's fourth career high end team. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Here we are back, hour number two. Sports on here on a Tuesday night. Jessica has been running all over the stadium. We were making some football players available for some interviews. I said this earlier. I, I thought everybody listened between 6 and 8, so I don't know why something got scheduled between 6 and 8 o'clock. But I mean, we're I thought to literally adapt. all the football team, all the staff that works here, all the Husker Vision and the photo guys, the corn crib guys, I thought they all, like, stopped everything that they were doing from 6 to 8. Cole does. Every I night. mean, but, yeah, no, they're – Kind of, we started this last year where kind of an internal media day, yeah. quote unquote, where they go through the car wash, if you will, of all the different stations. So they're doing hype ups and pump ups and the light show uh, introductions and intro videos. And they're actually getting to go inside the Go Big Red uh, building, the new project over there, the new facility, and shoot some of it over there. And so um, I'm grabbing them while they're waiting in line, waiting for some photos. So there's but they have them scheduled out each hour. So I've got three already. Talk to three guys. We'll be bringing those to you here uh, over the next few weeks. Fantastic. And a lot of these, if, you're, if you go to home games and you see the guys picture up on the scoreboard. Starting you know, lineups. That, that's what yeah. they're shooting for today. So when you watch yeah. on the screen and, and they're saying they're, what I, I think it's different every year when they announce the starting lineups. And sometimes I'm paying attention to the coin toss, so I don't even see it. But they, I think they announce where they're from or they just do a, a whatever video pose and all of that and then the hypes and then the photos and then you know on social media the gifts and all of that there's a lot of stuff that they're shooting for for the season which also is exciting because you know when they start doing this kind of stuff we're, we're getting too closer far and closer we're, i think we're inside of 90 days mm -hmm. now for kickoff for the for the season still have summer to get through i still need my toes in the sand before 
we kick this thing off. Uh, the biggest sports story on the planet today was a bombshell that came out this morning, and, and as it relates to the world of golf, really surprising that the PGA Tour, who has been in a war, really, over the last two years with Live Golf, backed by Saudi Arabia Public Investment Fund, uh, they started their own branch. They started peeling off prominent stars from the PGA Tour, like Phil Mickelson, Brooks Kepska, uh, Dustin Johnson. Uh, there's been a handful of them that went for a big money grab. Different format. They only played 54 hole tournaments instead of 72. They have played all over the world. I like that. And they've kind of added a team concept to this. Well, kind of out of nowhere, today it was announced that the PGA Tour, the DP World Tour, which is the old European Tour, and Live Golf have now merged together. A lot of the details are yet to be worked out. How to integrate back some guys that have left the PGA Tour back in is also not yet figured out. But the PGA, the guys that stayed, Jessica, with the PGA Tour are livid. They had a meeting with Jay Monahan, the commissioner, this afternoon up in Toronto, where they're all getting ready to play the Canadian Open. They are not happy at all with the commissioner. They feel like they got held, let out to dry. And completely blindsided. I mean, so many of them talking about they were just absolutely stunned, had no inkling. Nobody did. I mean, that's why it's kind of hard for me to process how I, I was just sitting here thinking while you were explaining it. Well, how did the tournaments look moving forward? You they know, know. Are, are they going to take on the live format? Or, I mean, it's just, it's, it's so bonkers because it was literally, you never thought this was going to happen. It, they were so far apart and so heated. And, you know, Jay Monahan took such a firm stance on it. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, and the players weren't even consulted with, which is a, another part of the problem that they, they thought that they were, maybe things were getting better, getting worked out because. There were so many things that needed to change with golf. It was kind of causing some positive changes that felt like things were getting better. The pay, uh, the caddies were being treated, but all these little things that they wanted to, to change were improving. And, I mean, it's been pretty exciting. You know, even the last two golf PGA events have gone to playoffs, and I've tuned in and watched every second of it. And then also you see the crowds that have gone out to live, so I felt like they could – exist separately and then have them come together for the majors like it's been and so i just it's kind of hard for me to wrap my brain around it because you just thought that this is how it was going to be and that they were going to be separate and all of a sudden boom but it is so crazy that that jay Mayan took such a firm stance and was going on and on about it and uh, you know the, talking to the players about taking a stance and how bad of a move it was and all of a sudden here we are and he's signing this deal and has not even communicated whatsoever with any of the players like do you think rory had any inkling no i think roy they may have gotten a bit of a heads up because he's been really quiet the last couple of weeks so i wonder if jay monahan said be quiet something's in the works i can't really tell you all about it both sides have been suing each other those all go away because of this announcement today Jay Monahan did say to your point about the t he likes the team aspect. He says that's something we need to try to maybe create and add fun. to it. I think it's been fun, and it's extra paydays for guys that are on winning teams, and they have their own little regimes. They all wear their different shirts and all that type of thing. I think it's been a fun part of Live to add that part to well, it. That's what's so fun about the Ryder Cup. So to, to implement know. it into golf, it'd be, be kind of fun. be kind of fun. I also like the fact that it's maybe more of a world tour. I think it's great to expose the game in Australia and maybe play some events in Japan and I know they do some of that, but make these bigger stars go around the planet. And I think one of the complaints, and you've got a friend that's caddies on the PGA Tour, is that the season has really become basically year-round. Yeah. These guys like, we need two or three months where we don't have a yeah. tournament. We can just push away and get our minds back right. It really is. I mean, they they play all the time. And that was part of the kind of the conversations that they wanted to have is – Kind of became a little bit like the NBA, right? I mean, yep. it just nonstop, and it's it's hard on the bodies. You know, we, you and I had talked about this a lot of times. They can't. There's no way they can have another job, right? And so if you're if you're going to a tournament and you're not getting paid, and then you got to fly right in, and, and how many of these guys have we seen have newborn children or, or young kids? And I mean, it's just a lot. It's a lot, and so I, I do think that, and I think that was one thing one of the live golfers talked about is how um you know fresh they felt being that they haven't played as much i was going to say this too i mean now looking back i felt like because for a while there was a lot of complaints that the coverage of the the tournaments weren't showing the majors weren't showing the live golfers and now maybe a lot of that is because there's been live, go live golfers in contention these last couple of majors but i feel like they've 
shown more of the live golfers throughout the coverage, and I don't feel like they bashed it as much. So t I wonder I if that conversation has started to be had that, hey, stop with the negativity on live. Right. It's it just to me now that I think about it, because I, I, I was thinking about that actually, whatever the last major was, I'm like, you know, when they first started this, it was like kind of being negative towards live, and they weren't showing anybody that was from the that had made the decision to go over there. Then all of a sudden, it kind of changed a little bit, and the broadcast changed a little bit where they were that we were seeing a little bit of that, and there was none of that negativity to talk about the live, and they actually were kind of talking about oh, in the last live tournament he did this, so. Kind of makes you think maybe there was, maybe some people knew this, what was going on. Everybody acts like they didn't. I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, but yeah, Roy has been really quiet the last couple of weeks. He's probably the most hurt today because he was the, the front man for yeah. the PGA Tour. And, and he, now, he was kind of making people angry a little bit about it. He was. It. He was really kind of attacking the guys that left to go to live. And now he's going to go, wait a minute. I stood up for a cause, which I thought and believed in, and now you've done the 180, and now you've joined forces with this group, and I could have gone there. Rory, I'm told, turned down like five or $600 million yeah. dollars to go. Yeah. Now he's going to be going, well, those guys get the money. They're probably going to get penalized some way to come back, but it didn't give me that kind of money to come back. I saw a few golfers kind of putting out that, that they were pretty disappointed in, and they they were told to take a stand and they were you know it was all this kind of harping on that and and they did and they were stood firm and you know my um distant relative one of the cootie twins actually had an offer to go to play live. in the live and he turned it down to be able to play uh, to have a chance at going on the pga tour i think he went ended up going through the corn ferry i don't know if he's qualified or has a card yet i should probably know that but um you know i think a lot of these players decided to take a stance on this because that's kind of it was just such this huge separation and and this is if you're on this side of it kind of from the PGA side of it if you're on the side of it you're on the right side of it if you're on this side of it then you're on the absolute wrong side of it right and so kind of a little bit of a pressure and then now all of a sudden to to for it to come out of nowhere a little bit and I gotta imagine a lot of them are really disappointed with how this all was handled Huge, huge story. Got to unravel how they're going to kind of piece this thing together in the coming months. Is there a chance it doesn't happen? Probably. It mm -hmm. probably could still fall apart, but Liv has now been accepted. They're going to be involved in the decision making. The PGA Tour is still going to oversee it all, but Liv has a seat at the table and has a say in how all of this is going to get put together. I do think golf is such a global game. I think it's great that they're playing these tournaments all over the globe. I think it's great that. Rory and Brooks and those guys can be seen in different parts of the world. I think it's great for the sport. And maybe playing in their and, home courses. And I think the LPGA is going to benefit from this too. It may take a while to get to them, but I know Liv had, Liv wanted to expand it into the LPGA and do a similar thing there. I think this will help benefit the LPGA. It may take a year or two to get to that, but I think it will help. I mean, which is great for for those women to have that kind of pay because, I mean, we talked to a. Uh, Coach Jeannie Sutherland. Sutherland. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, that's that's one of the things she had talked about when we're talking about there's a lot of sports that they're, the gap has closed, but golf is not one of those. And so to be able to have some kind of opportunity to be able to maybe equal pay a little bit more, more exposure, grow the game. Um, but, you know, we just talked about how many of these golfers have to be away from home. Think about those foreigners that are having to live here and just go from state to state they're i mean basically completely gone from home for a long time right. so also maybe give them the opportunity to play in front of their home crowd at wherever they're from well interesting story a lot still to come a lot we don't know about as it moves forward but boy this shook if you've watched any of the, the national cable shows today you've seen a lot of coverage about this and it'll continue to move forward our sports on hotline brought to you by woodhouse where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime they've got 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned you can always find what you're looking for with woodhouse when we come back jessica's going to sit down with a couple of husker soccer players they're back they're back from iceland i think they had a good time we're going to hear all about that next <laughs> From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm sports media student Connor Clark with Campus News. Engineering professor Ronald Fowler has been named a fellow of the National Academy of Inventors, the highest professional honor among academic inventors. As director of UNL's Midwest Roadside Safety Facility, 
Fuller has played a key role in developing innovative roadside safety technologies that are used around the world. Fuller has earned eight U.S. patents and three foreign patents over his 35-year career. In America, the future belongs to everyone. That's why we make trucks like Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 46 years straight and counting. Made for performance and capability. Made to play hard and work smart, on and off-road. That's because they're built Ford tough. So be future ready with Ford F-Series. Based on 1977 to 2022 calendar year total sales. For a delicious dinner on the go that will please the whole family, get high chai at High V. Right now, get a High V Chinese dinner for four, just twenty-two dollars during the month of June. Get four one pint entrees, two pints of rice or lo mein, and eight egg rolls or crab rangoon. That's right, get a High V Chinese dinner for four, just twenty-two dollars now through the end of June. Dine in or carry out the crowd-pleasing, award-winning High V Chinese today. Some restrictions may apply. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t-shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card, free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at FNBO.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. At CHI Health Clinic, we believe health care should be personal because knowing your provider personally makes appointments more comfortable, more productive, and more meaningful to your overall health. Get matched with a primary care provider based on your personality and lifestyle using CHI Health Clinic's My Provider Match. Take the survey at myprovidermatch.com to find the right provider for you. Getting healthier starts by getting personal at CHI Health Clinic. Husker fans, the 2023 Nebraska football season is right around the corner, and we need your support celebrating the 100th year of Memorial Stadium. Purchase a special Husker football through these gates mini plan. For only $100, you will be at the Northern Illinois and Louisiana Tech games, plus your choice of one home Big Ten game. Three games for only $100. Tickets available while supplies last. Purchase your through these gates mini plan today. For more information, visit huskers.com slash tickets. Go Big Red. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Huskers, do you want a fulfilling career that's financially rewarding? Explore the many ways you can be a part of the insurance community. Go to IIAN.org slash careers today. Business insurance is a lot to manage. Did you know a trusted choice independent insurance agent can help guide you through it at no extra cost to you? They'll do your insurance. You just do you. Find out more at trustedchoice.com. In America, the future belongs to everyone. That's why we make trucks like Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 46 years straight and counting. Made for performance and capability. Made to play hard and work smart, on and off-road. That's because they're built Ford tough. So be future ready with Ford F-Series. Based on 1977 to 2022 calendar year total sales. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skechers shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska soybean farmers. Growing opportunity from the ground up. 
Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres solutions for every field as we welcome you back to sports nightly i'm jessica cootie and multiple teams taking over seas trip this summer volleyball currently out of the country and uh, nebraska soccer just returning from a 10-day trip from iceland and here to chat a little bit a little bit about that gwyneth lane and abby schwartz man iceland how much fun was that awesome. it was so fun <laughs> yeah it was it was a really fun yeah. trip so what tell us about iceland what was the things that kind of stood out to you immediately I, I think my favorite part about Iceland was the waterfalls yeah. and the South Shore tour that we did. Mm -hmm. And just like a lot of the sightseeing was just mm -hmm. beautiful. So Yeah. Like so I much of it seen. was just like, like seemed like untouched. Mm -hmm. Like it was just how it had been. And like, I don't know, they just took really good care of like, like even all the sites that we went to, everything was like super clean, like mm -hmm. no trash. Yeah. I don't know. It was really cool. So when you guys find out, I'm sure you know, because these are a couple years in advance that hey we're going to Iceland what what was your initial thought because either one of you had been right yeah. yeah I think we were just like shocked but mm -hmm. I'm like so glad we went to Iceland because like I think there was a bunch of other places like we're like Spain was on the list Italy was on the list and we we're like oh that would be cool but like I feel like we're going to travel to those countries eventually like because that's like a popular destination but like no one really goes to Iceland yeah. but one of the last so things you did, because, I mean, if you followed along on your social media account, you guys are posting everything that you guys are doing. You went to the Blue Lagoon. That yeah. was pretty fun. It was so fun. That was, yeah. like, a good last day. Yeah. Just right like before the flight. Like, like just kind of, yeah. like, de-stress. Yes. I was like, oh, my gosh. I feel yeah. like I'm at a spa right yeah. now. It was awesome. Yeah. Well, in addition to all the fun stuff, I mean, you mm -hmm. did play a little soccer while yeah. you were out there. You had some training <laughs> yeah. sessions, played, yeah. what, four games. Yeah. Uh, what was the competition like, and, and how did you feel like you guys did when, when you were out there? Honestly, the, co the competition was good. We kind of played a mix of, like, semi-pro, like, like club, club teams. teams. We yeah. played some boys, yeah. some girls. It was, like, like a mix. Yeah. Some of the teams were mixed with boys and girls. Yeah, which was but, honestly yeah. really good. I think just, yeah. like, testing us physically a little bit more. Yeah. Um, honestly, our team played really well. No, it was so well. fun to see, like, especially after, like, a long winter spring mm -hmm. training. Like, that can be kind mm -hmm. of hard sometimes, I think. But, like, yeah. going and getting to play games like that, one, it's a lot less pressure because it's just, like, Teams you're never going to play again. It's just for yeah, fun. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was so cool, especially seeing, like, our new freshmen come in and, like, yeah. seeing the, grown. like, least, like, less experienced players, yeah. you know, getting those minutes and getting more experience mm -hmm. will definitely help us in the fall, too. Yeah. And it was, like, awesome to see, like, their capabilities, too, that we might not mm -hmm. have seen in the fall, too. Yeah. But it was awesome. Yeah. yeah. It was so cool. To your point about, you know, playing each other all the time. I mean, you see that with a lot of sports. Okay, I'm sick of going up against my teammates. How good is that to have this, you know, away from playing each other and getting to face different competition? Yeah, it's super cool. Yeah. And it's just like their style of play is so different too. Like, really? Yeah. How so? I feel like they're more like uh, they possess the ball more. I feel like I guess we're a very direct team. Mm -hmm. Like we love to like press and go, 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 yeah. as John would say. <laughs> but yeah, they're just, it's just so different. I feel yeah. like. You know, mention that there are multiple teams, men's basketball, women's basketball, volleyball, uh, and you guys all taking these overseas trips. In addition to getting to play soccer and all of that, how much does it bring a team together getting to experience something like this? A lot. I think it was like, I mean, 10 days, like how many girls are on our team? Like 25 of us. Yeah. Like that can be, like it can either go probably really well or really yeah. terribly. Yeah. Um, our team already, <laughs> I would say our team is pretty close already. Like yeah. it's been kind of awesome to see like, there's groups, but, like, everyone intermingles, and it's yeah. super cool. Like, there's no, like, clickiness. But this trip was so fun for, like, one thing was we didn't get to pick our room, so we were between, like, split up into rooms of two, three, and four. Mm -hmm. um, so you're just, like, getting to spend time, especially living with people that yeah. you're not around mm -hmm. all the time or you might not be super close with. So that was, like, one of my mm -hmm. favorite parts, honestly, just, like, sitting in our room at night yeah. and, like, talking to three yeah. girls. Two of mine were, like, new freshmen. So it was yeah. just, like, I don't know. It was really cool getting to, like... Yeah find things that we have in common and yeah. just like be stupid, And another thing we did that was like fun, but like honestly as stressful <laughs> at times was we would go to the grocery store. I knew you were going to say yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it was fun. Like I'm so glad we did it. So like me and my three room roommates, um, me, Maggie, and um, Abby Vasek, uh, we were in a room together. And so everyone would take the roommates and we'd go to the grocery store and we'd have to prep meals mm -hmm. and we'd have to like find meals for lunch <laughs> or pregame meal. And like at times I was like, oh no, I can't do this. Yeah. But like 
it all worked out, mm -hmm. and we actually made some like really good meals. So we made two tiny, like only two of the rooms out of all the rooms had kitchens. Yeah, so my room was one of them because I was in a room before. So it'd be like 15 of us girls in these like not big yeah. hotel rooms, like trying to all cook our meals, yeah. and I was just like, oh my god. No, and gosh. that's another thing about Iceland, or I feel like any like mm -hmm. European country, everything is so. Small, the beds, oh <laughs> like the beds, <laughs> like, like the meal portions. Yeah. I don't know. It was just like mm -hmm. crazy. Okay, so when you're you're saying that it was challenging, <clears throat> was it because you don't cook, or was it because of the ingredients <laughs> you were working with? It was probably more the first one. Yeah, because we have training table. We don't mm. cook, but also it was like we need something healthy because mm. we need, it's like before a game and stuff. Mm -hmm. But we also need to make something that because we don't have like. A lot of like fridge space. Like there was no. like a community fridge in the hallway. Yeah. So there was like limited and, like, space, plate. and like we didn't like have a lot of time to cook either. Mm -hmm. So we were like, oh, sandwiches yeah. every day. <laughs> really, Even just like reading labels, like in the store, like oh, yeah. it wasn't terrible. I mean, you yeah. can like look at things and kind of guess what it is, yeah. but it's just like, like some of the people on our team, for example, have like allergies. So you're trying to like yeah. read a label, mm -hmm. and you have no idea what it says. Mm -hmm. What was the food like? What was the best thing you ate? I think fish and chips. I was going to say, yeah, yeah that, that we were favorite. talking about that the other yeah. day, yeah. We but. went to this one little restaurant, and it was, like, on the water, pretty mm -hmm. much. It was, like, right on the ocean, so, like, it was... Fresh, super yeah, fresh. Yeah, it was so good, yeah. or so good, not, like, all greasy mm -hmm. and... Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, beyond just that trip, I mean, you guys just finished the spring, and I didn't realize this, and I was telling you guys this before we started chatting, but that... You guys have everybody back from a team that got really close to making mm -hmm. the postseason and, and went to the semifinals of the Big Ten tournament. How has that felt different, being that you have everybody back and you all have played a lot of minutes together? Oh, it's really exciting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It I feel definitely like, makes the yeah. season like like I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. Definitely, especially like <clears throat> I think at the beginning of last season. We we had experience, but we were also still a pretty young no, team. Totally. Like we didn't have any true senior besides yeah. like Riss was our senior, but we knew she was taking a fifth year, so we knew everyone was going to be back. So I think going into it, it was kind of like, okay, like what is this season going to be like for us? What should mm -hmm. we expect from ourselves? And I think just not really knowing how high we should be setting our goals or like yeah. what the standard should be. So like early on, we did okay, but like yeah. probably it definitely wasn't our best soccer. Yeah. So then by the end of season, kind of seeing what we were capable of, even at that point, mm -hmm. we we're like, oh. Like, we totally like, could be a tournament good. team and we could go far. <laughs> yeah. Like, I would hate to have had to no, play yeah. us in the tournament because yeah, it would have been no, yeah. a low seed. But I think that's just really exciting, especially going into this season. Mm -hmm. And because we didn't make the tournament, like, yeah. that's pretty motivating for us. We but, were one team away. Yeah, we were the last one. We, we were literally, gonna... uh, yeah, I was yeah. about to say, the, uh, one of the first four of you follow NCAA yeah. basketball, yeah. first four out, or mm -hmm. I think is the terminology. So how motivating is that for you guys, knowing you were so close and, and you did? You mm -hmm. knocked off some ranked teams, yeah. beat some teams that people didn't expect you to beat, but we're yeah. playing really good soccer yeah. down the stretch. Mm -hmm. So frustrating yeah. at first, <laughs> but it's definitely a lot more motivating. Yeah. And so now we can set our goals even higher and reach. Mm -hmm. and. Fulfill our potential. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so you were talking about the freshmen earlier. Tell us about the freshmen. Oh, they're awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely a bunch of goons. But yeah. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see how well they'll do. Mm -hmm. And I, I have full faith in them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, they've done awesome. Yeah. Another thing I didn't realize either is that of your 29 players on the roster, 15 of those are from the state of Nebraska, mm -hmm. and you yeah. two are two of those. Yeah. What was that like? I mean, what's that been like? Because not all of you came from the same high school. I'm sure mm -hmm. you battled out in club, but yeah. to have so many Nebraska kids on, on yeah. this team. Yeah. It's like, it's so cool. Like we were talking about earlier, it's so funny because like you grow up playing against each other, maybe playing with each other. And kind of being like, oh, yeah, like I'm going to play with you <laughs> yeah. one day, which, yeah, it's just cool now because, like, I think it also means a lot when you're from here to come mm -hmm. play here. Like, you grow up watching, like, yeah. I, we grow up watching Nebraska soccer, and so mm -hmm. it's, like, awesome now that we yeah. get to do that. And it's but, nice that we're, like, some of us are from, like, a bunch of different clubs, too. Yeah. So then it's honestly, like, better that we are from Nebraska because those um, younger girls from our clubs, like, come to our games. Mm -hmm. And, like, they support us, and they're, like, like, that was me at one point. Like, I would always go to the games, and now these little girls are coming to the games, and, like, they could end up here. Like, just oh. it's really yeah. cute. So, <laughs> yeah. 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 Because you guys had a packed house for the Big Ten tournament. Yeah, yeah I think. Oh, yeah. so fun. Um, I, yeah, that was, awesome. like, the coolest thing. To host a Big Ten tournament. Yeah. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah. You, were tell you guys were telling me that some of your teammates you didn't really like in club, but now your teammates <laughs> and you, you've gotten over them a little bit. Yeah. We were very competitive. We're, yeah, we're just competitive. You know, my club's better than yours. Yeah. Like, you know, just mm. basic. 
It's so Beef, funny because now it's like, oh my gosh, these are like my best friends. Yes. And I like, I only knew of you guys, mm -hmm. but it was just, it's so funny now. Yeah. What does that say about the state of Nebraska? And, and it's, it's soccer, it's volleyball, look at the women's basketball mm -hmm. team, the, the way that this state is able to produce so much great high school talent that are going mm -hmm. on to play mm -hmm. Division One, and in your case, soccer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know, like, soccer-wise, the amount of talent that we have here is kind of, I don't know, I think it's incredible. Yeah. I know a lot of, like, the teams here travel and stuff mm -hmm. to go play other competition, but, like, 15 girls on a roster, yeah. like, a Division One roster, like, out of school, like, Nebraska, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Especially and now that, that we're, helps, like, like yeah. us get more girls. Team too. chemistry, too. And I feel like yeah. Nebraska has done a, like, I know throughout, like, high school, this past, like, high school season, I still follow, like, high school soccer and yeah. stuff, because my sister is still in high school, and... Like, they do a, such a good job of, like, publicizing, like, mm -hmm. Nebraska soccer. And yeah. I think that helps a lot, too, in our case. Mm -hmm. It's on TV. Any other yeah. sport. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. And go to the year, tell me a funny story about what Coach did in the spring. Oh, yeah. <laughs> about, so we would scrimmage every Friday, just <laughs> keep our fitness up. And honestly, it was just, like, fun. And since we have so many Nebraska girls on the team, he would split up the team, all Nebraska girls on one team, and then he would call it the rest of the world <laughs> on the other team. And so we would just play, and it was just, just kind Nebraska of funny. Against the yeah. World. yeah. And I didn't realize, like, we had that many girls until, mm -hmm. like, that practice. I was like, oh, wow, yeah, we do have a lot of Nebraska girls. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it was fun. Yeah. I think, I think Nebraska won. Yeah. Wait, did we win? I think we did. Yeah, we won. Yeah, we'll uh, say we won. Uh, yeah, we'll just say we'll, we won. We'll, we'll, say, yeah. we'll yeah. say you guys won. <laughs> Well, what's next? What is the off season? What does the summer look like for you guys now that you're back from Iceland? Yeah. Um, well, we just started summer conditioning yesterday, so that's super fun. There's only a couple of us right now. Um, mandatory back in July, beginning of July. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so right now it's just like kind of prepping and yeah. getting ready everyone, for the season. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone kind of went on their little vacations right yeah. after Iceland, and a lot of more people will start filling in and yeah. stuff. How important so. is this time, the, the conditioning part, for a college soccer season and be able to, to go the distance? Yeah. I feel like it's the fitness part is definitely like the most important yeah. part for it's us. so crucial. Yeah, because the tactics and stuff will come later during fall camp yeah. and stuff. But this is like our time to grind. Mm -hmm. And obviously we have the fitness tests and all that stuff to worry yeah. about. So you definitely want to come back fit because... Right. Especially our yeah. style of play. Like the yeah. way our team plays, we... Like, we run yes. so much, it's yes. actually insane. Mm -hmm. I don't, I would I don't argue understand. that we probably run more than any other team in the Big Ten, but, like, <laughs> yeah. like it's so necessary, yeah. especially just setting yourself up for success, especially, like, if you're a young player, like, just having that strong fitness base, mm -hmm. I feel like coming in can make such a difference in, like, the yeah. minutes you're getting even, so, yeah. yeah. And you had made a good point earlier about how you didn't know what your goals should be. Mm -hmm. how, how does that look different this year now that you know you got everybody back, you got a lot of talent coming back, you're right there, and, and what you could do? How does that change now how you approach this offseason and leading into preseason? Mm -hmm. I think, well, just like even personally, like I think everyone started to realize like there's like – our team has a lot of potential, but like that starts like individually. Like mm -hmm. every person on our team has so much more potential, I think, than even we realized. So I think right now it's just like trying to push each other to get that out of one another. Mm -hmm. And then also like if we're gonna like miss a goal, let's miss because we're shooting too high, not too low. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think going in, like we probably could have accomplished a lot more than we did last year with what we had, but so like let's shoot higher, let's yeah. push ourselves harder and totally. just yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think that is that see what we can do? I think you nailed it. <laughs> yeah. I think you nailed it. Yeah. Okay, last thing I got for you, for Husker fans listening in, would you recommend traveling to Iceland? Yes. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Like, yes. most diverse. Yeah. Like, it's just beautiful. Landscape. Yeah, like, it's so, so incredible. vast. I don't, it, yeah. yeah, it's just crazy. Yeah. I learned so much about it, too. Mm -hmm. Like, really we had a great, like, I guess you would call him tour guide. Yeah. Brynjar, he was, like, our... What do you even... I don't know. He was um, awesome, he though. Was, he played soccer at Clemson, and mm -hmm. so he, like got us hooked up with all these games and stuff and he was just mm -hmm. awesome and then his dad was the yeah. bus driver for and they little, like and then, yeah, told us day. all these things about Iceland so mm -hmm. I actually learned a lot but yeah it was really cool yeah. like you look in a circle and it's like oh like we're on the black sand beach and like you're looking yep. at the ocean and then you turn around and it's like yep. waterfalls yep. and then it's like glacier mountain. Yeah, glacier mountain, mountain waterfall it, yeah it's so yeah. cool it's pretty incredible well, Gwyneth Lane, Abby Schwartz, appreciate your time. Yeah, awesome to you. chat with you and cannot wait for the season. I'm excited. Yeah. I know you guys have big things ahead mm -hmm. of you. And Husker fans, make plans already to be out there in the fall, yes. right? Yes. Get your tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks All right. For thanks for coming on. All right, going to take a quick break. But we're back with more from Sports Nightly coming up right after this. Buckle up and put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Do you want your date to wait for your interlock device to let you drive? 
your kids to ask why you have an ankle bracelet? Or your boss to see your criminal history? Do you want to miss important life events because of house arrest? Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. More Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic care first. Studies show that chiropractic is safe, drug-free, and the most effective treatment option for back, neck, and joint pain. It can also help patients of all ages reduce migraines, improve mobility, and maximize athletic performance. Keep the entire family healthy and active with natural, cost-effective chiropractic care. Find a chiropractic physician near you at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. There is no place like Nebraska, and there is no place that treats you like your home like Sap Brothers. For over 50 years, Sap Brothers has fueled America's heartland and has been a reliable partner to local farms, businesses, and Huskers fans across Nebraska. Providing the highest quality fuel, lubricants, and propane. Servicing your farming equipment and welcoming guests into our travel centers. Visit www.sapbros.net. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm broadcasting student Ann Gallagher with Campus News. The only designated R1 Research University in Nebraska, UNL's innovations power economic growth, precision ag production, tech breakthroughs, and future leaders in Nebraska. With the highest graduation rates and highest median earnings for recent grads of any public university in Nebraska, UNL is doing big things for our state. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota Hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota, the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota, the brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> Think again. Toyota Hybrids. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer estimates, CY 2000 through 2021 sales. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so hot. The air conditioner is out again. SOS, he screams and calls SOS Heating and Cooling. His favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. SOS, SOS. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared... You spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. 
More powerful than the Black Shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp back with you. Jessica's out tracking down some football players are having kind of an in-house media day. She's getting some interviews that we'll be bringing to you in the coming weeks. Uh, as the Huskers are into their summer conditioning plan, the Husker football staff was down in Houston today, another satellite camp that they went and worked and uh, tried to get the Husker brand out in Texas, get some uh, young student athletes to kind of give Nebraska a look. And uh, I'll tell you, this staff is working their tail off. They'll have another pretty good size recruiting weekend coming up this weekend. It gets even bigger. I believe the biggest weekend for the highest number of four-star, those kind of kids will not be this weekend, but next weekend. So uh, looking forward to having, uh, having the coaches get back into town here later this week. The, the story today has been Jeff Christie uh, mutually agreeing to part ways with the Husker baseball staff, the, long, the former Husker catcher. Lincoln Southeast product was the pitching coach for the last four years for Husker baseball. John in Omaha said, I always feel ba badly when someone hasn't, proved to be what they hoped was something much bigger. I'm sure nobody tried harder than Jeff. Sometimes things just don't work out. I'm sure he still has a good future in baseball. Jeff's a very, very good man, a uh, good coach. I mean, I, again, as I went through the numbers, it's not like this was a cut-and-dry decision for him and Will Bolt to make. I, I mean, I think Nebraska was okay on the mound. I think that the uh, Missed out on some development. Couldn't find that Sunday starter. Had trouble in the midweek games getting good quality starts. Uh, and that falls back on Jeff, and he would be the first to take responsibility for that. And uh, I wish him nothing but the best, and we'll see where Will Bolt goes from here uh, filling that vacancy. Uh, and I think it has to happen fairly quickly because you've got the portal open. You've got young men making decisions on where they want to jump. Nebraska needs to add some more arms. They did add one today. Bobby Olson is, has announced he's going to come to Nebraska. He's at Brown University. He'll be a senior. He had pretty good numbers for Brown. That's an Ivy League school. And, heck, the Penn Quakers just about won that regional down in Tuscaloosa over the week. So uh, we'll, we'll see where this goes. We'll bold, I'm sure, is all, all over it for the Huskers moving forward. Speaking of the transfer portal, North Carolina basketball player, Simeon Wilcher. Does that last name sound familiar? Wilcher? C.J. Wilcher's brother, who Nebraska recruited pretty hard, opted to go to Carolina. Folks, he's in the portal. Hmm. Fred Hoiberg still has a couple scholarships open. Could me? Maybe. And this is a guy that was really highly recruited, but Nebraska was right in there till the end with C.J. being in Lincoln. Simeon has come here, visited, been at PBA, been at the Hendricks Complex, seen what Nebraska's like. I know we got to know Coach Hoiberg. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that story. I don't, I don't know anything. I've not talked to anybody over at Hendricks today. Uh, but saw that name pop up this afternoon, and you're like, well, okay, this could get a little interesting moving forward. I'm already pretty excited about Husker basketball with the KC News from last week. But if Simeon uh, is available, and he is, Man, we dare to dream a little bit, right? So that, that would be kind of kind of a cool deal. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on that and see if something happens. Oscar Volleyball did get another sweep in Brazil. They beat a U-21 Brazilian national team. This was supposed to be a much sterner test, and it was. But the Oscars won 25-21, 25-18, 25-17, 25-19. 
25-21. So another sweep. They're 3-0 and in matches down in Brazil. Uh, they were playing some U-19 teams in their first couple matches. This was a U-21 squad, and they swept them. So, I tell you, it's going to be a fun season coming up for Husker Volleyball. Also was told that we're just days away from the volleyball schedule dropping. So about time, right? We're into June. I'm told by June 15th we will have the entire Husker volleyball schedule to announce and get out to all of you. So looking forward to having that pop um, coming up in just a few days. Our Sports Highly Hotline, it's open and available for you, 402-413-2400. Brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 Convenient locations are online at woodhouse.com anytime. They've got 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. And you can always find what you are looking for with Woodhouse. Again, the numbers, if you want to be a part of it, 402-413-2400. We're back to wrap up tonight's show next. Husker fans, mark your calendar for Sunday morning, July 16th to join the Nebraska football team in the race for a cure against pediatric brain cancer. It's the 11th annual Nebraska football road race. This year, all runners start and finish on Tom Osborne Field in Memorial Stadium. The final 69 yards will recreate the iconic 2013 SB Play of the Year when brain cancer patient Jack Hoffman scored a touchdown in the spring game. To register, go to huskers.com slash road race. Sponsored by the home agency with support from the Lincoln Track Club. Oscar fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890Nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student athletes. That's 1890Nebraska.com. Woodhouse is your premier luxury car dealer with exclusive Omaha Metro dealerships and seven top brands to choose from where craftsmanship, performance, and a stunning design are at the forefront. Your next luxury vehicle will immerse you in an environment unlike any other. Plus, get your buying experience to match the premium quality of your vehicle with available nationwide driveway delivery and our knowledgeable sales teams will exceed every expectation. Browse our selection of new and pre-owned luxury and performance vehicles online at woodhouse.com. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm broadcasting student Grant Hansen with Campus News. As worldwide leaders in ag technology, UNL faculty and students innovate using emerging technologies to improve yields and nutrition and designing wireless infield networks increasing precision in agriculture. Plus, UNL is breaking ground on a $7.2 million feedlot innovation center near Mead. UNL is doing big things for the future of agriculture. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Greatness doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, focus, and dedication. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that because we put in the hard work and dedication for decades. And that commitment has paid off with award-winning customer service for your auto, home, and life insurance. See agent Matt Moorhead or Joanne Shamanick in Lincoln or Scott Jeffers in McCook today. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Nickelode Ultra. The perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Folks, Husker Athletics giving you a chance to be a part of the 100th anniversary of Memorial Stadium coming up this fall with the Through These Gates mini plan. Three game ticket package that's now on sale. Get you a ticket to both of the home non-conference games on September the 16th against Northern Illinois, September 23rd against Louisiana Tech, and then you get to pick one of the five conference home games, Michigan, Northwestern, Purdue, Maryland, Iowa, whichever one fits into your schedule the best. The seats are in the north-south end zones. Again, they're on sale. Uh, you can do it online, huskers.com slash tickets. You can go visit the ticket office or give them a call. They'd love to 
get you set up. You can be a part of Matt Rural's first year as Husker head coach and the 100th anniversary of this glorious stadium. It's going to be a lot of tributes to the stadium, a lot of remembrances to all the amazing games, amazing players that have been on this field to play down through the years. So there'll be some really cool things set up for the 100th anniversary of Memorial Stadium. You know, when I, we talk about Memorial Stadium, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention that today is a very, very chilling day in a lot of ways. Jane, June 6th is, is the anniversary of D-Day, the invasion of, of Normandy, and how many young American men lost their lives on that day. And it just, I can't, even, I can't even fathom what that would have been like to be on one of those boats, uh, to jump out into the water, charge the beach, and get immediately into brutal con contact, uh, combat. Uh, just, I can't imagine that. So I always think about this day. My, my father was in the military, World War II. He was in the Pacific Theater. He was not in the Atlantic side. But, uh, wow, what a day. And I, I see pictures and uh, listen to some addresses by General Eisenhower about that day. Just, to, just gives me the chills to think about that. And, my goodness, those young men, 18, 19-year-olds, Jumping off a boat to do that, I just, I, I, I can't imagine uh, even doing that. I, I don't know that I could have done that, to be quite honest with you. And, but I thank God that there were people that were willing to do that to fight for our freedom so that we can enjoy little silly things like this show on a, on a nightly basis. Uh, Dennis on our text line said, this past season would, have, would you have taken timely hitting or pitching? You know, Dennis, it's interesting because Ben and I talked about this several different times that it just never seemed like, things kind of lined up for a very long period of time for this team where they kind of had it all going at once. You'd have games or even a series where you didn't hit it very well, nor did you really pitch it really well. But then you'd have times where you threw it pretty well, you didn't hit it, or you hit it pretty well, didn't pitch it very well. So it just didn't really line up a lot this year. I still cannot believe, and we talked about this at the Big Ten Tournament in Omaha, that Nebraska, they played 57 games they didn't walk anybody off. That's almost statistically impossible, particularly when you win more games than you lose, that you didn't win a game in walk-off fashion. They won one game. One of their 33 wins came when they trailed after six innings. So there was this no come-from-behind wins. For the, it was just a really odd year. And I can't put my total finger on it. I know Will Bolt's been doing a whole autopsy on the season over the last two weeks to try to figure out why it didn't quite go better than that. It wasn't awful. I mean, 33 and 23 is fine. That's, that's a solid year. It's not quite postseason, but they were, you know, within shouting distance of that. And yet you had two of the better offensive guys in the history of the school, and Bryce and Max, who, by the way, I saw Baseball in America today, has them both in the top 75 for the draft next month. I mean, that means they both could be second-round picks. That would be great. But it just, for whatever reason, it just didn't quite line up. And, you know, Jessica talked about the errors. Outside of, really outside of Bryce, this it was a really good defensive team. I mean, I think Max made one error all year long. Josh Karen was really solid behind the plate. Casey Burnham played great in center. Bryce had issues with throwing errors, and they did. They cropped up at some really inopportune times during the year. So just, you kind of feel like, huh, missed opportunity with this year. But again, 10 games over 500, you'll certainly take that. They won six of their eight conference series. As I put this in football terms. If we played eight conference football games, you'd love going six and two, right? Well, that's kind of what baseball did, but now they're in the market for a new pitching coach. Tomorrow night, Amy Williams is going to be here. I have not talked to the coach since the end of her year. She's welcoming some new players on the campus. And a little teaser alert, I don't have it totally locked in, but I might be talking tomorrow to one of the all-time great Huskers. I'm going to leave you with that. Thanks to Cole, to Jessica, who's out doing some work while I'm finishing up the show tonight. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Back with you tomorrow. Good night. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. At CHI Health Clinic, we believe health care should be personal because knowing your provider personally makes appointments more comfortable. 
more productive, and more meaningful to your overall health. Get matched with a primary care provider based on your personality and lifestyle using CHI Health Clinic's My Provider Match. Take the survey at myprovidermatch.com to find the right provider for you. Getting healthier starts by getting personal at CHI Health Clinic. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The thoughtfully redesigned 2023 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with up to 9.5 inches of ground clearance, more than Honda CRV or Toyota RAV4. The 2023 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information from manufacturer websites as of June 2022. Duto Subaru in Lincoln and DutoSubaru.com. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card. Free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at FNBO.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. In America, the future belongs to everyone. That's why we make trucks like Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 46 years straight and counting. Made for performance and capability. Made to play hard and work smart on and off-road. That's because they're built Ford tough. So be future ready. 